sure you have the tickets? Yes, dear. And the traveler's checks? Yes, dear. And you took your drama meeting? Before we left the house. You know George. He gets air sick in an elevator. I think I'll get some magazines. Oh, I'll get them. You don't know what I want. I know exactly what you want, darling. Let's change to it, dear. We have to get our baggage. Orient Airlines, flight 17 from Omaha, now arriving. Passengers will disembark gate number I wonder if we should have asked her along. Who? Jane, of course. Why? To meet someone. Don't you see, if we'd taken her along, she might have run into one of those fabulous Hawaiian millionaires who own everything but Pearl Harbor. Darling, someday that imagination of yours is going to get you into trouble. A pineapple cake. That'd be it. Millions of pineapples. We'll bring her back, woman. Stop daydreaming. But I worry about it. Sometimes I wonder whether she'll ever marry again. I don't think so. There isn't a thing in town that wears pants I haven't introduced you to. Mm-hmm. The pants are getting shorter and shorter. Seriously, Jane. There's something wrong with you and me. Something missing. Sex, I think. Anyway, I wish you'd come along on this trip with us. That's what best friends are for. Well, so what? She was your best friend when we got married. She didn't go along on that honeymoon, did she? I think he wants to be alone with you for a change. Cornball after eight years. Thanks, darling. I love it. Sorry, madam, but your baggage is 14 pounds overweight. 14 pounds? Well, of course it is. It has to be. Really? Expected to travel with an extra pair of stockings and a spare girdle. I think you'll find my baggage compensates for Mrs. Mason, Stuart. You're right, sir. Flight 22, gate 6. Thanks. Honestly, George, you weren't so agreeable with people like that, they might change the rules. <laughs> yes, you might miss the plane waiting for the changes. Now, don't defend him, Jane. You know what I mean. George is so non-aggressive. There's the family. Oh, darling, oh, I don't like this. Oh, I just as leave you didn't fly. Oh, Daddy. The Lord wanted us to fly. He'd give us wings. Bye, George. Have a good time. Goodbye, Watch out for the hula girls. Goodbye, Jane. Bye, Jane. Goodbye, darling. Thanks for everything. Aren't you going to kiss me? George, kiss Jane. Goodbye. Oh, sometimes I wish you had more wolf in you. <laughs> Bye, Jenny. Bye, bye. Bye, George. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Come along, Thomas. You know the plane will just sit there for hours. But, Mother, I just love to sweat out the takeoffs. Thomas, don't say sweat. I'll say goodbye for both of us, Dr. Chamberlain. Uh, yeah, Mom's you. right. It'll be forever before they gun her. Let's cut out. Good old George may not be bright, but he's sure successful. Did you see those clothes she had on? Oh, if I owned a plant, you'd have clothes like that, too. Name, please. Mr. and Mrs. George Mason. Thank you. Hey, your poor dad. She never lets him wait. Silly just standing there like a tourist like Jane. Bye, Janie. Bye, Janie. Bye, George. Bye, darling. Oh, no. Would you like a pillow? No, thank you. You may smoke now. Thank you. You know, you can read those in the dentist's office with the National Geographic thrown in. Honestly, George, I never saw a man fight so hard to be typical. The trout season, the plant. The outsmart, the plant. Nine holes of golf, the plant. The bowling league, the plant. And once a week, by golly, poker with the boys. I like poker. Larry, starboard engine's burning. Feather it while I hit the fire steps. George. No dice. That's a help. Mail for Coward from Flight 22, right engine out and burning. Returning to Melford, clear all traffic, emergency landing, off. Who gives them the good news? It's your ball. If I even go back for a Kleenex, they turn green. I don't feel so good myself. Ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, we've run into a little trouble and we are returning to Melford immediately. Please do not be alarmed and remain in your seats. Now just relax. Everything's going to be all right. Are you sure? Yes, please be seated. Now, don't worry. Everything's all right. George, what's going to happen? I don't know. Well, you think it's serious? Of course it's serious. One working engine, the other burning. You think we'll make it? We'll make it okay. If we were going to crash, the pilot would have come back and told us himself. Ladies and gentlemen, we are about to jettison our gasoline. 
Please put out your cigarettes and do not touch your seat buttons. Now fasten your safety belts and please be calm. I'm scared. It's just a safety precaution. Lighten the load in case we have to crash land. You're scared too. Take it easy. It'll be all right. No, no, we won't. Let's not lie to each other. I've got a feeling, a bad feeling. Jenny. We're going to die. I'm sure, I know. Oh, darling. George, can you forgive me for everything? Forgive you? I've been such a rotten wife. Ginny, I've always been so proud of you. Well, you shouldn't be. I've been selfish. Has there ever been a day when you haven't thought of me first? You've been all good and I've been all bad. Now there's no time to make up for it. Darling, you're not the only one who ever made a mistake. I've nagged you and belittled you and all the time you never did anything that was mean or selfish. Or... But I did, of course I did. No one is pure as the driven snow. You're just trying to make me feel less guilty. I know you through and through. And I know there's nothing you could possibly have done. <laughs> Darling, forgive me. Ginny, there's nothing to forgive. You mustn't condemn yourself. We've all had our moments. I've been as bad as you in a different way. Oh, no, not you. Never you. Ginny, three years ago, remember when you were so bored and restless and you went to New York and I was alone? That's what I mean. How selfish I was. I knew you were sitting at home miserable and missing me. Darling, don't, because I wasn't missing you. I mean, poor miserable. A fella gets tired staring at himself. He wants companionship. No harm intended. And you know how it is. A couple of martinis, doubles. I guess I just went crazy from loneliness because the minute you came back, I knew you were the one. The only one, see, Jenny. And don't think I haven't suffered. I paid for it. I've been sick over it. Only it never meant anything. Not really. Who was it? What difference does that make now? It's been over three years. Who was it? Jane. But darling, that isn't the point. Jane! But she's my best friend! Wait, Jenny, I haven't told you all of it. Ladies and gentlemen, attention. We're making an emergency landing. Fasten all seat belts. Do not go rigid. Relax, and don't worry, we'll make it. We're going to crash. Darling, we just have a second. Tell me you forgive me. Yes, yes, I forgive you. Larry, look at that. It's out. The fire's out. Now he tells me. Mr. and Mrs. Mason, come on, you can get out now. It's all over. Ginny. Darling. I never had a chance to finish telling you. What I mean is, nothing happened. I mean, it never really, you understand? Nothing happened. Where do you want the luggage, sir? Right up in the porch. Jenny, George! I lost an earring at the airport and went back. They told me what happened, so I tore over here. Oh, darling, it must have been awful. Yeah, I'd better check the baggage. Oh, what happened? Engine burned. Oh, no! Those last few minutes just before you came down, they must have been ghastly. Yeah. Well, did you know how bad it was while you were still up there? No, not till we got down. That does it, sir. Jenny. Do you realize you haven't opened your mouth? Well, I think she's getting a delayed reaction. Oh, poor baby, but it's all over now. Oh, I don't know. Oh, well, of course it is. Shall I come in and help you, darling? Well, I think I'd better get Virginia to bed. So long, Jane. Thanks. Coming, dear? Uh, you go ahead, George. I want to talk to Virginia a minute. Open the window or something. Well, go ahead, lover. 
terrible the way I order him around, like a baby brother. Look, are you all right? Fine. Well, Jenny, your mother and dad are bound to hear about this any minute now. Would you like me to go by and head them off? Please. I'm terribly happy you're both alive. Thanks. Loads. Thanks for everything. Oh, uh, call me if there's anything I can do for you or George. Sometimes I wish you had more wolf in you. went to the house. They said you were having a meeting. I am. The deacons were discussing the frailties of the flock. I'm so happy you're safe, George. Father offered up prayers at once, and uh, I did, of course. Thanks, Dad. Is Jenny here? Uh, no, why? Something wrong? Well, Virginia's rather upset. It's reasonable, considering. It isn't exactly the plane accident. Uh -huh. It's more a talk we had just before. Oh. And it isn't exactly that she's upset. It's more that she's angry, very angry, with me. It does happen, George. I'm positive we can straighten it out, I think. Only... She drove off and I don't know where, and I don't want her wandering around town upset. You know how they are. Oh, yes, they, they talk. They talk too much. Very quiet Saturday night. We just Everybody talks too much, George. I wouldn't say you're wrong. But, Dad, about Jenny, I'd better find her. I would. Jane's house, I think. To talk. No. Oh. Well, let's discuss where an irate woman might go to hash things out. To her parents, but she didn't. Uh, to her minister, unless she's a minister's daughter, which she is, and anyway, she didn't. To her doctor. No, she doesn't like his wife. To her beauty parlor, to talk it over with her hairdresser. Clothes. Oh, well then, that just leaves one place, George. No offense, but... To her lawyer. I don't care how it's handled, just so long as I never have to see him again. You take care of it, Pete. I don't want anything from him, just the divorce. But I want that fast. Oh, sit down, Jenny. Take a deep breath and a short slug. You're all unstrung. I am not unstrung. I'm just awfully mad at myself for having wasted myself on that illiterate. Oh, take it easy. George may not be a genius, but he can read and write. He can read Dick Tracy and he can write for fishing rod catalogs. Don't stand up for him, Pete. He's an unfeeling bore. I've asked myself a thousand times why I ever married him in the first place. Well, if you're not wild about it. Wild him. about him? Oh. Then why are you so upset? Why am I so upset? I you first. Because... Because it's humiliating, that's what it is. Oh, I don't see how. And insulting. Through sheer boredom, I am forced out of my home on a trip to New York for a breath of fresh air. And he goes banging around the town like the town Ray Kelly. And all the time it's his fault. If anyone should have been pushed up the primrose path, it was I. If anyone should have been dissatisfied. Jenny, you wouldn't vice versa. You wouldn't tit for tat. Oh, don't be ridiculous. All I want is a divorce. And all I want to know is will you handle the case? Sorry, Jenny, I've got to say no. On moral grounds. But there are no moral grounds. That's why I'm here. No can do, sweetie. I think you are wrong. You think George is right? Well, he may not be right, but he isn't wrong. Look, Jenny, George asked you to forgive him after he'd confessed, after you knew everything, and you forgave him. But I thought we were going to die. Exactly. The most solemn moment of your life, the curtain, you gave your word. That was because I knew I wouldn't have to live with him. Oh, please, dear, don't be dishonest. Not with yourself. You're a sophisticated girl. You've been around. I mean, New York, Chicago. And you know as well as I do that these half-baked intrigues don't mean a thing. That's when they're happening to someone else. The fellow gets lonely. Gets tired of staring at his own face in the shaving mirror. Craves companionship. No harm intended. Few martinis, doubles, bingo. That's exactly what George said. Only not quite what you mean. Hmm? George said... Nothing happened. 
course he did. Of course he did. But that was after we got down safely. Well, it's the truth. Take my word for it. It went nowhere. Pete, you knew this was going on. Oh, not exactly. A bar here, a bar there. You know, bachelor's intuition. You did know. In a town like this, everybody knows. Ye gods, why didn't he advertise? My mother, my father, my brother. They didn't know, Jenny. Your, your father, maybe, but the others, no. Why is the wife always the last to learn? Jenny, dear, I've got to talk to you before you do something desperate. Hello, Pete. Hello, George. I know how hurt you are, and I'm sick over it. I've got to tell you Then exactly. tell me. Alone? Pete is my attorney. You can say anything in front of him. If you'll just let me show you how it all happened from the beginning. I don't care about the beginning. I know how Jimmy, it ended. And that's what you're please. sick about because I do know. Now one favor. I'm not getting a divorce if that's what you mean. Thank heavens. Darling, listen now. Listen you yourself, just... darling. I said I'd forgive you. All right. I forgive you. But that's all I promised. I didn't promise not to hate the sight of you for the rest of your natural life. You poor slob. Mr. Mason. Katie, how'd you know we'd need you back? Miss Jane called me. Some month off. Nice you weren't killed, though, jobs being what they are. <laughs> Is that for the missus? It doesn't look right, does it? Well, it wouldn't get recommended by Duncan Hines. You want me to take it up? Well, she... She's a little nervous. Then you take it up. When she's nervous, I'm nervous. You might like breakfast and then. I'm not hungry. Have a good night, dear. I had a stinking night. I expect to have stinking nights from now on. Look, dear, we've got to settle some things. There have been phone calls. Jane. How dare she? Darling, she doesn't know you. No. I'll kill her. Jenny, don't say things like that. You've only upset yourself. And your mother called. The whole family is on its way over. Oh, no. No, no, I can't see them. They know all about it, about you and her. No, no, I couldn't face them. They never knew anything about it. That was three years ago. It's ancient history. It's new to me. Brand new. And I won't see them. I, I won't have them here pitying me, laughing at me. I, I won't. I, I can't face them. I, I'm sick. I'm too sick to see anybody. Especially you. Want some coffee? Yes, please. You can take food at a time like this, Thomas, with your daughter in a state of shock. Yes, my dear. Oh, men are coarser than women. You said it, Mama. Well, if she's goof, why doesn't he call a doctor? Answer me that, somebody. You heard me tell him. He's not going to keep my daughter incarcerated any longer. Mrs. Chamberlain, it's Virginia who doesn't want to see anyone. She is going to see someone. Well? All right, finally. Thomas does it every time. No, Mother. The only person she'll talk to is her minister. Dad?
Your daughter must have something on her conscience, something she's ashamed to tell me. She knows your standards are lower. As they are, my dear. As they are. Come in. My dear child. I'd rather you didn't use that word. I'm speaking to you as my minister. As a matter of fact, that may be the only way I'll ever speak to you again. Please sit down. Professionally speaking, then, I repeat, my dear child, what can I do for you? Dr. Chamberlain, on the plane yesterday, my husband confessed that he had been involved in an intrigue with my best friend. I never believe gossip. It makes people behave unspeakably. If you mean George, the behavior that was unspeakable was three years ago, as you very well know. Are you still talking to me as your minister? Because as your minister, I, I didn't know. Isn't that odd? Because Pete says my father did. And I always assume that what my father knows, you know. If your father didn't tell you, couldn't it have been because he knew George loved you? Because he felt that far outweighed one mistake. Or could it have been because a divorce in the family wouldn't have been any too good for my father's business? In my opinion, you'd do him an injustice. But of course, that's just my opinion. Oh, Daddy, you're supposed to help people. Help me. Yes, dear. I'll try. How to face people who may have laughed at you or worse, been sorry for you. <clears throat> mm. Of course. That way, nobody would ever dare feel superior to you again. But it isn't something anyone could do. What is it? Forgive. Really forgive in your heart. Oh, it isn't as easy as it sounds. Who says it sounds easy? It means understanding that people are weak and prone to sin. But as you understand, you'll change, you mature, you'll grow in stature till at last you tower above those who hurt you. And they'll know it. Oh, it wasn't easy for Joan of Arc to forgive her enemies either. But believe me, that's what ennobled her. She was so forgiving and so noble that her poor enemies either killed themselves with remorse or went crazy herself. you could do it, people would find in you a new depth, a new richness, a new strength. They would not say of you, attractive girl, oh no. They would say, yesterday afternoon at the country club, I met a great woman, a great woman. Jenny. Jenny. If I've worried you, please forgive me. Well, what was the matter with you? Someday we must discuss to whom we should confess our sins. Well, you haven't told me what was the matter with you. Whatever it was, it's all over now. Yeah, let me look at you. You look perfectly terrible. Oh, Mother, you've been telling me that since I was three. Yeah, well, you are a little palesville. Who isn't without makeup? Uh, say, Ginny, did you get the house coat in New York? Yes, Glossy. Would you like one? You're kidding. George will get you one on your birthday. Sure. Sure. Gee, that's swell. Yeah, hey, uh, thanks a lot, George. Yes, George, thank you very much, darling. George is so kind. <laughs> well, everything seems to be cool around here. What do you say we blow? We can still make a movie. Okay, sis? Oh, please do. You mustn't waste any more time on me. Jenny, are you sure you're all right? Of course she's all right. All she needs is a little rest and a high-protein diet. Come along, Thomas. No. I mean, why go home? It's early. Why don't we all have a cup of coffee? They all have their own evening plan, dear. Uh, yes, dear. Uh, and we have to go sometime. Girl. Thomas, you know I don't like loitering. Yeah, coming, Mother. Father. Thank you. Uh, yes, dear, but uh, relax a little. Uh, uh, you know, uh, Rome was, wasn't built in a... Uh, you know. 
Goodbye. Ginny, are you really all right? No aches or pains? You look different. Some aches and pains are good for the soul. Maybe you're right. Night. See you tomorrow. Night, George. Night. Your dad did help, didn't he? He made me see that I must really forgive. Can you, Jenny, please? I can, George. I forgive you. And each and every day, I'll forgive you again. Honey, what do you say we go away for a couple of days, just the two of us? Let's just stay right here and face whatever has to be faced. But there isn't anything to face, is there? Anything new, I mean? You're new to me, George. I must learn to understand you. Oh. Yeah. Sure. Anything you'd like to do? Drive? Movie? A drink? I have so much to think about, and I need rest. Good idea. Why don't we hit the sack? Yes. George, would you mind very much sleeping on the daybed in your dressing room so that I won't be disturbed? I well, know. Not a bit, dear. Thank you. You're very understanding. have your grapefruit before you smoke. You shopping for an ulcer? I'm waiting for Mrs. Mason. Since when? Good morning, George. Good morning, darling. I've waited for you. No, no, I wanted to. Thank you, dear. Good night's sleep. I got up at three. Why? I was working. <laughs> I'm sorry, dear. I guess I'm just a little fuzzy this morning. I but wanted I... to do something for my father. I wanted to show my gratitude. You wrote him a thank you letter. I wrote him a sermon. You? What about? Sin. He can deliver it next Sunday. Or if he'd rather, I will. You? In church? Why not? Well, I mean, after all, Jenny, wouldn't it seem rather pointed? Oh, darling, not against you. Me. I'm not blaming you. It was I who compelled you, forced you. If I'd stayed at your side, this would never have come to pass. Yeah. But uh, can't we just forget it? I must never let it happen again. Oh, for Pete's sake, honey. Hi there. Anybody home? Mind my barging in so early? No, not at all. Good morning, Jane. Certainly not. <laughs> this house has always been your home as much as mine. Good morning, Katie. Good morning, Miss Jane. So, what's for dinner? Anything simple, Katie. Simple. Simple and plain. Meatloaf. I just wanted to get another look at you. You didn't seem quite yourself last night. I hope I never am that self again. That's what I mean. Don't be silly, Jane. You're just imagining things. Would you like some coffee? I'll have Katie bring a cup. Oh, I'll, I'll use George's. Make it taste better anyway. Aside from the fact that I'm glad you're both alive and kicking, I find I just can't live without you, George. The shop finances are in an awful mess again. Will you help me untangle? Well, I'm going to be pretty busy. George, darling, don't be stuffy, dear. You've always untangled Jane before when she needed it. Ow! Oh, oh, darling, oh, let me have oh, Katie Butter! Oh, oh, darling, this is... Oh, no, Jenny, yeah, no, 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 please, 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 please forget, no, no, forget no, the butter. Jenny, no, no. Forget. She oh. mad at me? Or is it just my day for accident? Oh, no. Jane, of course I'm not angry with you. There's no reason for anyone ever to be angry at anybody. 
Not if they understand them. <laughs> That's what I need. Somebody to understand me. Besides you, George. I think I do. I understand you. Now, what is this? Ginny, come on down to the shop with me. No. I mean, uh, why? Well, first to look for her marbles. She's obviously lost them. And then, since you're going to be here for my birthday party, I, I thought you might help with the plans. Jane, do you think in times like these that you should spend money and energy on anything as trivial as a party? Why, you give ten times as many parties as I do. But after what happened on that plane, I have a whole new slant on life. Well, anyway, once a year, I have the right to say officially that no matter how anybody else feels about it, I'm glad I was born. Of course I'll help. Oh, but you can't. Uh, I figured that we could have lunch together today. Well, we can all meet later, can't we? Well, I don't think under the circumstances. What circumstances? Why not, George? Yeah, <laughs> why not? <laughs> Let's not make mountains out of lunches. Run along, George. We'll give our old man a ring later, if I'm still alive. We'll give our old man a ring later. Yes. Oh, oh, darling, what about oh, you? Oh, darling, Jenny. Katie, oh. bring back the butter. Oh, oh Jenny, no, never mind. Here, Forget here, it, Jimmy. No, no, Jenny, please. Here we are. No, Jenny, Jenny, oh, right. please. Yes, no, just will. leave me alone, Jenny. No. Please. Oh, Go no. away, Jenny. Go away. Charlie, two vodkas. Straight. Pete, what do you think? The Chinese water torture. As bad as that? Drop by drop, eating away the foundations of your soul. She couldn't be nicer in an awful kind of way. Do you realize this could go on for years if you don't stop it? What can I do? George, you've always been a schnook. True, true. Cast off the shackles. <laughs> Tell her you've had your punishment. You love her. Tell her either to tie a can on you or else bring you your slippers and start life over again. You're right. Tell her you can't go through life as a zombie. Good line. The way you have. Oh, thanks. Tell her if she doesn't stop killing you with kindness, you'll write a sermon for her father confessing everything. Wonderful. That's a masterstroke. Great idea. Pete, you're a true friend. I'll get on it right away. So long. So long, blabbermouth. Hello, George. Hi. You turned it off. Yes. Don't you like classical music? Every other Thursday. Did you have a difficult day, dear? Yes, dear, I had a difficult day. Isn't that the way you arranged it? Whatever do you mean, George? Jenny, listen. You've got every right to be angry, to be furious, to blow your bonnet. All right. But to pretend to be noble and forgiving while you're rubbing our noses in the dirt, that's crummy. I haven't pretended to be anything. I've just tried to rise above this whole sordid mess. And I'm proud to say that I have. Well, start coming down to earth again, because it's not going to work. If you think we're all going to be buddies, you and Jane and I, you've got the wrong pigeon. It's ridiculous. Jane sitting there in the middle, not knowing you know while you bait her. I've been very kind to her. That's what I mean, so cut it out. And get this, we're not going to see Jane again, not for a long time, because we can't. I can. And that being so, it seems a little thing for you and Jane to do. Jenny, will you stop trying to be a saint? You're not fooling anybody. You're only making Jane and me idiotic and yourself a horse's neck. George! I'm sorry if I was rough on you, darling. Believe me, I haven't forgotten whose fault this is. Don't keep saying it. I know it's all my fault. All my fault. No, no, dear. I'm only trying to be the kind of woman who won't drive you to this kind of escape again. Jenny, if you go on this way, you'll drive me nuts. I don't care. It's my duty to myself. To see that if there's any further transgression, at least it won't be because of me. Fine. Great. Why don't I build a pedestal here in the living room where you can stand all day and forgive us poor mortals? George, you're being crass. Oh, come off it, Jenny. Half the time you look like you're posing for a shot in town and country. The other half playing a second act by Tennessee Williams. It's time you stop being the sophisticated lady and remember you're a little girl who was born in Melford, Illinois. Elevation 247 feet. Is that what you want? A milkmaid going out to the cows? All I want is a plain, ordinary wife. 
Somebody who'll actually cook a dinner herself sometimes, like Nancy Walters. Somebody who isn't always trying to keep up with the Joneses, like, like... Like Jane. No, not Jane. Darling, listen to me. I'm, I'm not trying to fight with you. I just want to straighten things out. Be yourself, not superwoman. No writing sermons, no discovering radium, just a helpmate. A plain, ordinary wife. Plain, ordinary wife. I mean a beautiful, ordinary wife. <laughs> Dear, that's what you want. Hello, Pete. Very dull mail this morning. Thanks a lot. What's on your mind? Got a fellow flew in today who might sell you for us, that's all. Nicholas Reed. The Reed estate in Wisconsin? I'd sure like to meet him. You will. He's picking me up here. Gonna take him to the club for lunch. I didn't think he'd ever sell. He'll sell. Glamour boy type. Real expensive taste, but getting nervous about the cash balance. Well, bless his little heart. We'll help him out. How much does he want? One cool million. Wow. Pete, I'd sure like to have that lumber. We're getting down to our last toothpick. Will he take a down payment and a note? Sure. Good. Thing is, will he take your note? I know this guy. He thinks anything that's not New York or Chicago is strictly rhubarb. But what do I have to do? Move? No, but it'd help if you could show him you're a civilized type. Civilized. George, if we could just do a social thing. Cocktails and dinner at your place. You mean Ginny discussing everything from Sadler's Wells to the three-way stretch? He's just the sort of jerk who'd think it meant you couldn't go bankrupt. Well, okay. Yeah, but what about Ginny? What about her? Well, the last time I saw her, I got the feeling she was just about to cut your throat. Now, that might make Reed a little uneasy about your future and your note. That's all straightened up. You're sure? Believe me. Swell, in that case, we haven't a worry in the world. Mr. Mason. Yes, Anna. And Mr. Nicholas Reed to see you. Well, send him in. Send him in. Nicholas Reed, George Mason. Hello. Subject, forests. But not before you join Mrs. Mason and myself for dinner tonight. It'd be vulgar to discuss business before sharing my scotch. Well, that's kind thought. Thanks very much. I'd be delighted. Good. See you both at seven. Just like that, without even checking with your wife? Jenny? Oh, that's no problem. Oh, the tales I've heard of wives who were taken unawares by sudden guests is one of the reasons I've remained a bachelor. <laughs> Not Jenny. She's different. Yeah, she's different. Only, uh, hadn't you better make a routine call? Well, all right, if it worries you. Big deal. Two extra. Katie, the staff will handle it. However, hello? Jenny, darling? Oh, George, how nice to hear from you. Listen, dear, a friend of Peter's just hit town, and Pete wants to bring him out the house for dinner tonight. That okay with you? Of course, darling, anything you want. It won't put you to any trouble, will it? Of course not. That's my girl. Right, darling. Thanks, dear. See you later. Amazing. George, you must have talents that don't show. It's possible. Modest fellow. <laughs> Don't you believe it? Well, Nick, shall we lunch? Oh, thanks. I could use one <laughs> with a twist of lemon. See you later, George. See you, Seven. How's that for connections, huh? <laughs> Perfect. Are you quite sure it's all right? Oh, you don't know Jenny. Only thing that makes her live it is not having hordes of people to entertain. Isn't it, George? Well, isn't it, George? What's the matter? Uh, nothing. Absolutely nothing. Come in. Sorry, dear. I just wanted to get my windows nice before you got here. Okay. I want you to meet Nick Reed. How do you do, Mr. Reed? Please, uh, forgive my appearance. 
It's perfectly all right. I'm afraid we're early. Oh, no. No, no, you're right on time. It's, it's my fault. Oh, the, uh, the cocktail things are all ready for you in the living room, dear. Well, aren't you going to have one with us? Oh, may I? Shouldn't I tidy up a little first? Well, sure. George. Yes, Jenny? You're sure you want me to come down? I mean, I won't disturb you. Of course you won't disturb me. Thank you, dear. Uh, uh, I'll do the drinks. Uh, give you two a chance to talk a little. Uh, let's go into the other room, Reed. You uh, have a very lovely home. Well, glad you like it. Uh, we built it ourselves. Uh, do much flying? Oh, quite a bit. Uh, look, if this is going to be inconvenient... Oh, no, no, can... not inconvenient at all. Jenny just... <laughs> Jenny just knocked me for a loop. George, I'll bet this is the first time she ever lifted a pinky around the house. <laughs> <laughs> Jenny, what are you doing? I just can't seem to get this spot out. Well, aren't you the busy little housewife? But now let's stop all the hustle and bustle, shall we, dear? After all, we have a guest. Jenny, you and Nick have a great deal in common. So let's go over and say a few words to him, hmm? Yes, George. Uh, what do you do, Mr. Reed? Why, well, own some trees. A couple of hundred thousand of them. <laughs> are you a grower? I think we need these. I'll get them. Jenny, please. I'll handle them. Cut it out, will you? This guy's only here. George, are you angry at me again? <laughs> no, dear. Of course not. <sighs> Sit down. Thank you. Excuse me. Thank you, dear. You're welcome, dear. Excuse me. George, may I sew? Mm. Yes, dear. Do you make your own clothes? <laughs> In New York, twice a year. I'm ashamed to say I never have. But from now on, well... George works too hard for me to throw his money away. Ginny. Find the going a little rough, huh? No, not at all. This is one of the best years we ever had. We're crawling with unfilled orders. I never find the going rough. George never complains, no matter what. Oops. Oh, that, excuse me. Where are you going? I've got to see to my dinner. Ginny. Why not let Katie worry about it? Why let Katie go for the evening? You, why? Well, you said you wanted some home cooking, so I, I tried so hard. But not tonight. Oh, I didn't know. I probably misunderstood. Couldn't we, couldn't we talk about it later? Excuse me. Jenny, Ow! For heaven's sake. Startled me. I can't explain now. George, what on earth's the matter with Jenny? I don't know. She's got to look like my cocker spaniel gets when I grab him by the neck and say, who did that? Nick wants a much bigger down payment than we thought. Well, look, Reed, uh, due to a circumstance I can't explain, which happened several days ago between my wife and me, yeah. somehow you've gotten the wrong impression. There isn't the faintest chance of my not being able to meet my note. I'm not strapped for money and I can prove it. You'll have to. You see, she's had a very upsetting experience. I wouldn't say it unbalanced her exactly, but she certainly isn't herself. Is she herself? Oh. <laughs> well, that's not Jenny at all. I don't know why you're criticizing Mrs. Mason. 
She's a very charming woman who I imagine has a pretty tough row to hoe. She has nothing to hoe? Absolutely nothing? nothing? I personally think she's a very unusual woman for this day and age. Listen, there is nothing unusual about my wife. I mean there is, but not the way you think. She has a maid, she has a car, she has charge accounts here in Chicago and New York. She, she goes on trips day and night. There is nothing she has wanted since the day we were married that she hasn't had. If you want the truth and you can ask her own father, I'd say she's about as spoiled as a woman can get. Soup's on, dear. Shall we dine? Have they gone, dear? Yes, they've gone, dear. That's nice. What's nice about it? George, what's the matter? Do you realize what you have done to me tonight? George, you're angry at me again. The object tonight was to prove to Nick Reed that my signature on a note meant something. What you have proved so meticulously is that the only thing I have a right to sign is an application for relief. Oh, but I didn't know. Honestly, I didn't. You didn't tell me how important it was. Do you know what this little dash of whimsy has cost the Mason family? One cool million, that's all. Oh, I know it's less than the cost of an obsolete battleship, but it wasn't bad from where I sat. George, honestly, I, I didn't know. You just said two extra for dinner. You didn't tell me it was important. Jenny, have you lost your mind? You did everything but show the black and blue spots from my beating you. <sighs> my beating you. You said you wanted me to be a plain, ordinary wife. So, so I, I became, became a plain, plain, ordinary wife. What kind of a man do you think you married? Do you really think you're married to the kind of dope you can play soap opera with? Oh, I didn't mind being the typical American male, the bumbler, the poker by golly with the boys. I didn't mind because you liked that. It gave you a fine sense of false superiority, which was fine, because I happened to be in love with you. Well, after what happened, I'd like you to tell me what kind of woman you want me to be. Yourself, for Pete's sake. Nagging, belittling. I liked it. It was great. I was a happy man. But because I made one mistake, and because I told the truth, I've had nothing but the big needle ever since. Maybe you think it's easy for me to be normal and natural after what happened, after you make a public spectacle of me. I simply told the truth. I wish you hadn't. All right. Little George Washington's going to bury the hatchet. But if I ever chop down another cherry tree, and I may, you won't even hear me call timber. Because you've made truth about as popular as the income tax in this house. Isn't that bad luck? Mr. Bentham is waiting. That's what I said. 
Good morning, Gabby. You don't look bad for a man who committed economic suicide last night. Didn't sleep, that's all. You didn't sleep. After I told my psychiatrist what happened, he didn't sleep. Pete, it's a little early for jokes, if that was one. How's Jenny? Don't worry about Jenny. That I fixed. Now, if we can just do as well with this deal. That's why I've asked Roger Walters to meet me here. Roger? What for? After the fiesta last night, we could use the president of the Melford Bank to say a few kind words about you to Nick Reed. Oh, I see. Now, you get out of here, let them shoot the breeze, and afterwards... What do you I'll... mean, afterwards? This guy, Reed, isn't going to go snooping through my bank accounts unless I'm right here. Old man, now don't take it personally. As far as Nick is concerned, you will not make friends and influence people. Well, his charm doesn't exactly captivate me, either. With all those fascinating trees. Mr. Mason, Mr. Walters is here. Send him in. Good morning, boys. Sorry I kept you waiting. Shot a 93. Well, what is all this? Well, I told you the deal, Roger. We're offering 100,000 down, the rest spread over three years. Now, what you do is assure Reed that George's note is as good as money in the bank. Hmm. From the bank's point of view, nobody's note is as good as money in the bank. Besides, besides what? This is a small town, George. We sense things in each other. When my wife, Nancy, talks on the phone with your wife, Virginia, for over an hour, she senses that all is not well. When it comes to things like your credit, well, alimony and community property are bound to make any note of yours somewhat risky. Now, I'm not implying anything. But tell me, old man, how are things with you these days? Roger, let me tell you something. George, Reed will be here in a minute. Roger, if you louse up this deal, I'll murder you. Roger, let me explain. George is in trouble, but not the kind you think. Mr. Mason, Mr. Reed is here. Hi, Pete. Hello, Nick. Roger, I'd like for you to know Nicholas Reed, Roger Walters. How do you do? Pleasure indeed. Mason, Reed. Why don't you take off your coat and be comfortable? Oh, it's really quite simple. I just want to find out how Mason rates what you think of him. What as does a... he need a character analysis for? Well, I wouldn't if he could get the million in cash. Nobody has a million in cash. I have. Well, bully for him. George, will you get out of here? Do you want a new lawyer? Well, okay. Okay. And listen. Just answer questions that have to do with this deal. If I beat my wife, it's none of his business. By the way, why do you? Mr. Mason. Mr. Mason, you forgot your coat. Wow. What a stinking day. We ought to have your brains examined being out in it. No choice. I'm late now for the Nelford Uplift Club. And look, Katie, a beautiful run in my stockings. Is Mrs. Mason home? Any minute. Mr. Mason's taking a shower. He was soaked through. You mind if I borrow a fresh pair of nylons? If you have before, help yourself. <laughs> Thanks, Katie. At least you return them. That's more than I can say for the clip artists who work my closet. Is that you, darling? It's me, darling. How are you? Okay. You know that deal I was so sorry about last night? I think Pete is fixing it up. That's swell. Whatever you mean. Lousy day. Putrid. But the weatherman says it'll clear in time for my birthday party. Great, great. Birthday? Virginia! She's not here yet. It's Jane. Jane! Of course it's Jane, sweetie. You've gotten so used to Ginny and me, you can't tell us apart? Get out of here. you got to get out of here. If you ever had to get out of any place, it's here right George, now. George, have you lost your mind? I'll lose my home if you don't get out of here. What are you raving about? Did Virginia ever find you here? Wait a minute. Virginia's found me here for the last six years, more or less. Nobody had to write the unwritten law. That was before. Before. Jane, please, I'm begging you. Get out of here right away. Let me get my shoe. Hello, darling. You're right in the nick of time. George is for the birds. Ginny... So help me, I was taking a shower. I think it's pretty rotten to bring it into the home, George. Dear, I'm telling you the truth. You said you'd never tell the truth again. That, I believe. Darling, I... Pardon me, will somebody explain the plot to me? I came in in the middle of the picture. 
Let's not be hypocritical, Jane. I know. You know what? I know. Yeah. Well, maybe I better go out and come in all over again. Maybe you just better go out. Jenny, what on you earth? You and George, three years ago, he told me. George, you didn't. Oh, yes. How could you? How could you humiliate me, you big jerk? Is it so painful to you, dear? And remember, when it comes to humiliation, I had to forgive him. Jenny, darling, listen to me. It was a long time ago. And it wasn't important. It didn't go anywhere. That's what everybody tells me. I'm only trying to say it was completely unpremeditated and unplanned. He was terribly lonely. He craved companionship and... Well, I, I guess so did I. You were gone a long time. And then, one night... No harm intended. You know those man-killing martinis I make. Oh, yes, I'm aware of them. Jenny, believe me. Yes, I know that, too. Nothing really happened. Awfully sweet of you to give me the details. Jane, I don't think... George, that... you keep out of this. I'm only trying to straighten Jenny out. With a conscience like yours, there's no telling what you said. At least he had a conscience. That's the only reason I've been able to live with this. Well, how big of you. But then you always did have a strong moral fiber. Pardon me, but I'm late for the Melford Uplift Club. That's very funny. Poor George. And of course you won't be able to make it to my birthday party tonight. What a sad night for all the bright young men who always found you to be the queen of their Nile. Yeah, what a pity the poor man's Cleopatra won't be there to dazzle the multitude and be the belle of the ball. Think of the poor, jealous girls who won't be able to envy you. will come. After all, it is your birthday. Besides, it might be fun. Fine. And don't forget to bring your asp. Isn't it a lovely sentiment? Touch it. <laughs> Pete, will you help me get them started on dinner? Already. I'm scared of the chef. Okay. Uh-oh. Jenny. Hello, darling. I hope you have a terribly happy birthday. Thanks. Uh, where's George? I assumed he'd be here. Well, Jenny, I can imagine how it must have looked to you. Oh, exactly. darling, you're not going to be a dull one, are you? George is a big boy. You're a big girl. And I'm at party. Jenny, I'm shopping for a partner. So am I, dear. So am I. Hi, sis. Hello, dear. How long will you be in Melford, Mr. Reed? As long as it stays pretty. This is me, sir. You may not know me without my pail and mop. Which one is you? The real me. Suppose you tell me later. The children will excuse us, won't you, dears? Oh, it's a nerve. Let's go get a drink. Well, buddy, how are you? Now, what's with sis making like Hedy Lamar? You're right, she is stunning tonight. Bourbon and water, no ice. One vodka, straight. You, I don't dig either. George. Hi, Jane. Happy birthday. What are you so cheerful about? Dance beautifully. Uh, oh, I'd go mad if I didn't have my escape hatches. New York, Chicago, San Francisco. But sometimes it's amusing to act as if the world were made up of one's own little home, one's own little town. One's own little husband? Good old George. 
best thing that could have happened. She's paying me back in public. At the right moment I get sore, we have a terrible fight, then we make up. Well, you better tell Nick about your plans. His are different. Oh, let him leer. He's leaving town tomorrow anyway. There's a word for the kind of husband you look like right now. Sticks and stones may break my bones. Jenny wants me to squirm in public. I'll squirm. Encore. Tell me, doesn't uh, good old George mind all this? I mean... Well, why should he? He knows I can't bear to be limited by anybody or anything. Still, I wonder why he doesn't come over. Without being asked? Oh, but that would be rude. Oh. to my humiliation. Hi. Having fun? Oh, isn't he sweet? Say good evening to Nick, darling. Hello. Yeah. Sit down, George. I hope you didn't mind my running off. I meant to leave you a note. As long as you're having a good time, dear. Oh, I am. Aren't we, Nick? Well, that's nice, isn't it? George. I'm crazy about your wife. I can't blame you for that. No, he can't blame you for that. Oh, George, look at Jane. Why don't you dance with the poor girl? Well, I... Uh... She's George's secret passion. In Melford, they're an item. Only he still can't get over feeling wicked about it. Amazing town, Melford. While George is wrestling with his conscience, why don't I show you the, uh, grounds? We have beautiful grounds. Wow, well, it's... It's been years since I've seen a good set of ground. Of course, uh, they're still damp from the rain. Well, the operation is proceeding according to plan. But one of our aircraft is missing. Are they still out there? If I'm not nervous, why are you? I'm nervous because you're not. Oh, oh you sly fox. You see, Nick, I told you he wouldn't be lonesome. It's a sweet party, Jane. But you won't mind if Nick and I run along and look for greener fields. Not if George doesn't. Does George? Don't worry, old man. I'll get her home safely. You do that, old man. <laughs> Take good care of George, Janey, dear. Good night. Thank you. If we just stop acting so guilty. Take it easy. Well, now I've got to go home and start my waiting. How long a wait would you estimate? About 3.30, long enough for me to get good and worked up. That's the object. You worry me, George. You're feeling too clever. Don't do that. It's like the signal for Virginia to make another entrance. <laughs> Jane, um, this guy, Reed, would you say he was attractive to women, I mean? I hate to do this to you, George. Like a ton of bricks. Well... 
morning, Matt. Well, Mr. Mason. If it's pine, we can take our time. But with maple, we gotta act fast. Only I need your okay. So which one, pine or maple? Oh, that'll be fine, Matt. Whatever you say. Uh, I've got to get to the office. You know how it is when you're expecting a phone call. Uh, Mr. Mason, is anything wrong? Wrong? Why no? What could be wrong? What have you heard? Uh, nothing. Nothing. Oh, well, that's what I mean. Nothing's wrong. George. George. Pete, have you been in my office? Hannah says to tell you that there weren't any phone calls. But I got some good news for you. I just ran into Nick Reed. Uh, Jenny with him? He was cashing a check. She was waiting for him in the car. That the good news? Nick changed his mind. He says you can have the lumber. Well, on our terms or not at all? Better terms than ours. He says we can pay it off any way we want. Swell, isn't it? What exactly did he say? Oh, I... I don't remember. Yes, you do. Well, George, I... All right. He said, ah, give the poor guy the lumber. You want anything, Mr. Mason? Like a midnight snack or a bottle of bourbon? You might as well go to bed, Kitty. Oh, she'll be along any minute. Just trying to get your nanny. She's got it. Is Virginia home? No. I just came by, George, to tell you I... I won't see you in church. I'm going away for a couple of days. But I've got to talk to you. I've been ordered to talk to you, George. That's why I'm going away. Mother. Mother. She insists that I reprimand you before the entire family by asking you how it is a man could be so weak-kneed as to allow his wife to become a public spectacle. It's not easy. She also insists that I remind you that a man is always master of, <coughs> of his home. So I, I sneaked out the back door, and I don't feel the slightest bit humiliated for doing it. Where are you going? You won't tell anybody. No. McCarran's health farm. You might think about it, George. No women allowed. And the house rule is keep your paws open and your mouth shut for 48 hours, and you'll be a new man. You know, George, you could stand to be a new man. But you can't just run away from things, Dad. You can't? Champagne was divine. I'll hurry like a mad thing. Jenny. George, however have you been? I want to talk to you, Jenny. Well, come right on up. is Reed going to be in town? Hmm? Oh, I hadn't thought to ask. George, you're not being jealous, are you? Isn't that what you want? Oh. Jenny, we can't go on this way. Oh, darling, of course we can. I'm having a wonderful time. Now, I didn't mean to sound as if I were criticizing. I know you've been under a strain, and I know you'd never do anything really wrong. You couldn't. You wouldn't. I trust you, Jenny. I trust you implicitly. Are you listening? Mm -hmm, you trust me. Of course. But people get into things without meaning to, because they're tired or have one drink too many, or... Well, that's why it's better not to start things, because... George, what are you mumbling about? It uh, couldn't be Nick, could it? Well, yes. You wouldn't it... be telling me not to see him, would you? I don't like to tell you anything, Jenny. You're so right, darling. 
Some people aren't in a position to tell other people anything. What to do, what not to do, who to see, who not to see, or anything. Are they? No. That's my good old fair and square, George. What are those for? Oh, didn't I tell you? I'm flying away to Chicago for the weekend. With... with... George, you're spluttering. Of course, with Nick. We're leaving on a three o'clock plane. Don't worry, darling. We'll be back Monday. You're not going. Now, now, now. We've been all through that, remember? Some people can't tell other people. And so on. And Stop so that. You're not forth. going. Maybe I do deserve it, but I love you, Jenny. There's a limit to what I can take. Oh, it's really not that important. In three years, you'll forget all about it. Better go down and tell your boy you have other plans for the weekend. Oh, but darling, that would be untruthful. Because I haven't. Virginia, I won't be here when you get back. Then don't forget to lock up the house. See you Monday. Hello there. Going away again? Yes. We uh, kind of cut your last trip short. Yes. Of course, we'll get to the Blackstone. We'll find the Rotary Club is having a convention. And who's the delegate from Melford? My brother, Buddy. Only he's a lion. I'm Sigma Chi myself. Of course, the real trouble is, you're not married. It uh, removes a certain element of, of danger. Nick? Yes? It's no good. Whatever do you mean? I can't do it. I don't mind kidding you, but I'm kidding myself, too. I'm awfully sorry. You should be. It's just George. Afraid you've squeezed the last drop of blood out of the terminal. Oh, no. No, he'll still be there. It's just... You're not angry with me, are you? Oh, no, no. But I might have been if I'd gone to the trouble of buying you a uh, ticket. You mean... How could you have known? Oh, we philosophers have had this problem before with headstrong young matrons. Never mind the lady's baggage steward. She's staying. I guess I have that coming. In spades. I can't help it, Nick. I love him. And he is my husband. He is. He sure is. All right, Nick. You win. Goodbye and better luck next time. Wish George the same for me. I meant, uh, goodbye. Bye, Jenny. George? George?
matter? I want to see George. Well, he isn't here. Or do you want to look in and under my bed? He's killed himself. George wouldn't do that. It's against the law. <laughs> nah, he hasn't killed himself. Otherwise, he would have said, don't blame yourself, darling. They always do so that you will. No, sir. He's just flown the coop, that's all. Jenny, dear, you've been walked out on. Well, that seems funny to you, does it? My best friend, who's just been pining away with guilt about me for three years. You hypocrite! You always were two-faced, even in college. Oh, I remember how shocked I used to be, young as I was. Exactly, three months shocked. Five months! months. <laughs> the way you used to connive and plot and scheme. Jane lends you her term paper, her best dress, her allowance. Jane will do anything just to be liked. That's right, I had to work for it. You got it for nothing just by being your helpless little self. Helpless? Like a boa constrictor. It just killed you that I got married first. You never got over it. I never got over why you did, because you were too lazy to go to work. That's a lie. I gave up a career for George. I could have been a but great actress. actress. Yeah, yeah, I remember that season in summer stock. George looked a lot better than those reviews. A shame you didn't look that good to George, wasn't it? Only George wanted me. Mm -hmm. And he got you. But the results of the eighth race aren't in yet. He still wants me. But he still left you. What a brute to walk out. And just because you tortured him a little. What's the matter, kid? Losing your grip? I hate you. I've always hated you, and you've always hated me! But that doesn't mean we can't be the best of friends. Wait a minute, what's your hurry? You haven't checked my closets yet. I'm going to look for him. Where? And anyway, why? Because he left you instead of vice versa? No, I'd never have left George. That's why I didn't in the first place. Not because I promised. I still say why. Because remember, this is the man you refer to as good old George. So don't tell me you love him. I will tell you I love him because I do love him. How do you like that? Not much. He might have killed himself. I'll be thinking of it. Jane, I've got to find him. Where can he be? Do you know? Did he tell you? Who would know? Who would know? I can't think... Except your father, maybe. That's it. That's it. If he told anyone it was Dad. Thanks. Don't think this changes anything. I still hate your guts. The same goes for me. Call me if you hear from him. Mm -hmm. You too. Okay, darling. We're looking for your husband, and I'm amazed at the lack of organization oh, mother, in the police department. stop it. Department. You'll make George look ridiculous. Not if he's dead. And if he isn't, he ought to look ridiculous. Oh, mother. Now, you're to check every one of the railroad tracks and drag the river. I keep telling her we don't have one. Oh, where's father? Hmm? Oh, has the Reverend scrammed too? Not at all, officer. I know how to deal with my husband. He's just gone away for a few days to, uh, compose his thoughts, as he does from time to time. But where? Doesn't she wish she knew from time to time? The missing person we're trying to find is George Mason. Never mind George Mason. Where's Dad? Dr. Smith? Dr. Smith. Good morning, Virginia. Good morning. Are you taking over for Father? Yes, he called me yesterday. Did he say where he was going? Uh, no. No, dear, he didn't. Dr. Smith, I think he did. No. And you're going to tell me. Hello. I want to see my father, the Reverend Dr. Chamberlain. Mm-mm. This secret sanctuary was conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created hand-packed. Oh, but I'm a daughter. Now, that's different, isn't it? Man seeks solace from a savage jungle creature called woman. In other words, no dames allowed, and that's all. That isn't all, you big dope. I want to see my father, and I'm going to. You want to stop me? 
I wouldn't dare. But I would. Lady, if you think I've got any compunctions about pushing a lady's face in, you're wrong. That's why they gave me this job. They'll try anything. My poor child. Well, but, never mind. You must go away from here. You must go away at once. Just a minute. Stay where you are. Did you see George last night? I don't know what Dr. McCarran would say. I don't care what Dr. McCarran would say. Did you see George last night? Uh, well, I, uh, uh... Kindly remember, you're a minister. Uh, well, uh, yes, I did. Hello, man. Hiya, Butch. Come on. You say you saw him? Uh, uh, yes, I, I did. How did he seem to you? Was he upset? Well... Oh, I've got to find him. Did he say where he was going? Uh, did you say, did he say? Uh -huh. uh, no. Well, can't you guess? Didn't he even give you a hint of what he was planning. What do you want him for? What do I want him for? He's my husband. I love him. Shh, 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 shh. Daddy, if you know anything, please, please tell me. Ginny, you're putting me in a terrible position. If I do know where George is, maybe I can't tell. Can't you see I'm half out of my mind with worry? Maybe I promised I wouldn't tell. And if I promised, what am I to do? I hear you, Dad. Darling, darling. Oh, darling, I've been so worried about you. Did you have a nice trip? I came back. But you were gone. I looked everywhere. I thought... George... How's Nick? George, please come home. Oh. Ginny, I think we should call it a day. But I love you. I love you. That's fine, but that isn't the point. It's the only point. You're supposed to be happy when you're married, and you're not. Neither am I. Not since the plane, not since Nick. Darling, I didn't go with Nick. I couldn't. Don't you understand? Nothing happened. I mean, not really. Nothing happened. Do you believe me? Yes, I do. The thing is, you don't believe me. No, I don't blame you. Maybe it's right I should go on paying for that one mistake the rest of my life, but... It does seem as if it could have been worse. Oh, dear. Children! Children! Come on, let's get out of here. They mean business. Wait a minute. Oh, we boosted up with the wall. What you said about it could have been worse. I think we better join it. Dr. McCarran seemed rather hostile. You take that one. Work of a lifetime, ruined, ruined. Get out and stay out. 
I want to know exactly what you meant by that crack. What crack? You said it could have been worse. Well, it could have. If Jane hadn't made those murderous martinis of hers, and if I hadn't gotten loaded, it could have been a lot worse. Oh, darling, did you honestly really mean it when you said nothing happened that night? No. Two things happened that night. What? One, I threw up. Two, I passed out. You did? Why didn't you tell me that before? I told you. But it sounds different, darling. It sounds true. Martinis never did agree with you. What difference does that make? Thinking a thing is as bad as doing it. The thought is father to the deed. Oh, no. No, it isn't, darling. No, no. No, it isn't. George, when you said you'd never tell the truth again, did you mean it? Darling, of course not. Liar.